Hello, spookies! From a young age, fitting in is something everyone is told they should do. We're taught early to conform, or to do what other people do in order to be a part of the crowd. Standing out, or being different, is not necessarily celebrated. At least, it wasn't, up until recent years. The horror movie we're discussing today is about wanting to be a part of the group. Admittedly, this theme is, frankly, pretty poorly executed in the film, but it's relatable nonetheless, particularly to a queer audience. There's an inherent otherness to being queer, and sometimes it takes a while to find our chosen families, our tribes. Honestly, I think we're very fortunate to see the world a little askance. To be able to experience both sides, the heteronormative ways of life that are ingrained into us, but also to have our very own sort of language we're allowed to speak and to hear, to feel. We get to set our own rules. And while the film doesn't quite nail the message, it's a theme I'm certain many of you queer listeners might pick up on in a more intimately specific way than non-queer audiences. So let's get into it. I present to you 1981's cult slasher, Happy Birthday to Me. Let's go rick-or-treating. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Rick Retreat Horror Cast. I am your host, Ricky Duarte, and today I am joined by my very good friend Jason Kerr. Hi. How you doing, girl? Well, how are you, Matt? I'm great. I'm excellent. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you as my first guest. Oh, it's so good to be here with you, darling. Well, Talking you know. about what we love most. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are a couple of scream queens. Yes. I gotta say, we yes. do appreciate a good horror movie yes um not that we are talking about a good horror movie today (laughs) (laughs) i'm debatable i mean i i I did enjoy it i don't hate it i (laughs) i gotta say i started this movie so i selected it because you know this is our debut of the rick or treat horror cast and it is uh debuting on my birthday it's also the birthday of the pod uh so we uh (laughs) Thanks, I'm cute. Uh, we're talking about <laughs> they can't the see you. 19... <laughs> oh, but if they could. If they could, they would say, is she? <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking for new co-hosts and guest hosts. Uh, starting immediately. <laughs> that evil laugh. I'm going to have to add that to my intro music. Um, the 1981... Classic. It it is has a, cult status. It has it cult status. Have, the 1981 I, slasher flick. I thought it was a different film, but go on. I so well, you know what my, you, you know what film I thought it was. Happy birthday to me is what we're talking yes, about. What yes. movie did what movie did you think I was talking I about? I thought it was the the newer one, the the, the other camp. Happy version. Death Day. Happy Death. Oh, Day. which is cute. I thought, I thought about thought that one too. No, yeah. I I for a Bloomhouse movie. Which we have plenty of episodes to talk about how I feel about Bloomhouse movies. Okay, um, she has opinions. I enjoyed that one, and I liked the sequel. The sequel was better than the original. Than okay, the, than the first one. Yeah, it yeah. was. Let's talk um, about it someday. But you know, maybe we'll come back to that because this to. year we are talking about a movie heavily influenced by none other than the original John Carper ma- masterpiece, yeah. Halloween. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like this film. Is in between the impact of Halloween and the wave of slasher films Correct. that were to follow. This, I feel... The kills were the biggest hell with that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. This movie um, is in the figuring it out period. Yeah. Right? The Wild we're, West. Yeah, they're still trying to get there. Yeah. Right, They're still figuring out what's going on. How do we tell this story? Do we cling to like how horror movie storytelling was in the past? Yeah. They haven't jumped the ship yet to what would become camp, right? But we're going to get to that When we see the director, I mean, that makes sense. And well, he's done. Right. Makes a lot of sense. We'll talk about him yeah. in a mo. Um, 
Let's take a moment and introduce ourselves. Oh, hi. Um, you all have probably already heard my intro, uh, intro or preview episode, but again, uh, I'm Ricky J. Duarte. I'm a horror fan, and I have been for a very long time. Um, I firmly believe that horror as a genre reflects the zeitgeist of what's going on in at least our country more effectively than any other genre. Um, I think that it holds a mirror up to humanity in ways, whether the movie, whether the filmmakers intended to or not, in ways that other genres can't. Um, you know, like examples, we look at, think of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We've got kind of post-Vietnam era. We've got these um, naive kids, right? They're the, um, the youth of America is fed up. Um, you know, the, the loss of industry is explored in that movie, whether these filmmakers meant to or not, and I think it's probably there on purpose, right? A gas shortage, um, heavily reflected. Um, obviously, slasher movies throughout the 80s are excess, as the 80s were also a lot of excess. And so, um, as a queer person, I grew up, my superheroes, my Superman, my Batman, my Spider-Man, they were like the classic universal monsters. I thought Frankenstein or the Phantom of the Opera, Quasimodo, these, the others, right? These forbidden characters um, were very relatable to me. And, you know, you think of someone like Frankenstein's monster, didn't ask for any of it. He doesn't know oh, wow. that he's considered that a monster. Yeah, yeah. right? Um, he's a romantic. He's intelligent in the book, at least, you yeah. know, um, po you know, reciting poetry. Um, you know, growing up queer, feeling ugly, feeling cast out. And uh, so I just, you know, that was kind of what drew me to the genre. And then as I got older and, you know, started to um, develop interest in boys and seeing all of these horror hunks, especially in those 80s slasher movies, oh my God, we're going to have to dedicate an episode to that. Oh, we should we should do, definitely do a horror hunks. Horror hunks. Yes. Maybe, yeah. Maybe around Valentine's Day, because we oh, will be reviewing My Bloody Valentine, which we'll talk about a little oh. bit in this episode. So that's where I'm coming from, um, you know, and why I wanted... There are many, many horror podcasts. There are many queer horror podcasts, and I am... Here's another one. There's, no, there's another one. I'm excited to join this space. I think that, yeah. you know, uh, there's room for many, many perspectives. And I think, you know, I'm very interested. Um, Shudder has this new uh, documentary coming out, Queer for Fear, talking about the, the cinematic coding system. Yeah. And where oh, queer, yeah, where yeah. queer horror fits into many of most of the movies that we've watched. We have Kel Kevin Williamson who wrote Scream. Yeah. We have, um, oh God, who did Chucky? Um, uh, Don Mancini yeah. created oh, yeah. Chucky as a gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Um, obviously, James Whale, who did Bride of Frankenstein. That's the probably the gayest horror movie <laughs> of all time. Um, and uh, it's always been there. Yeah. And so I'm excited to have this documentary come out because I can finally stop having cis straight men tell me I'm crazy when I try to explain these things to them, you know? Have they never seen uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 2? No. No, it's the one that they choose to ignore. It's so it's it's like overtly queer. It's too queer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I love that movie. We got I mean I think Pride Month will probably do an okay. episode an episode okay. on that one. Right. For sure. Hear that kids stay tuned. So that <laughs> if we will at least make it till Pride Month next year. Yeah. Um, Jason, I want to know about your history with oh, with, I with feel horror. Mine is a lot simpler than that. Okay. Well, I, well my that mother doesn't surprise I, me. I, I, <laughs> I'm naturally drawn to horror as a person, mm -hmm. as a person I am. No, my mother loved horror, uh, and and I grew up watching. She loved watching Chucky and Nightmare on Elm Street. And uh, I don't think she loved Halloween. I, I, I think I personally found Halloween. But she watched all those campy horror films growing up. I remember like going to the video store and going to the, 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 the horror section and she would pick something and then I, you know, I'd go pick something from the kids section, but we'd all watch the same shows together. Um, but her love rubbed off on me because horror was horror wasn't horror. People, I, 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 didn't, I didn't grow up clutching the covers to cover, cover myself. I, I grew up, Rooting for the mur rooting for the slasher, <laughs> uh, 
waiting to see what, what was going to happen and how and how hard the kill was going to be and and screaming and and, and applauding at the death. It, 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 was, it was that was my Saturday night in my home. Uh, so that is how I fell in love with horror. I'm uh, learning so much about you. Your taste in men, for <laughs> once, is coming from. The- <laughs> No, I love that. Yes. I really love that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and, and, and then further, I, I, I learned that, that other people love horror for, for different reasons, many different reasons. Uh, and uh, we all bond on, on the fact that it's just a lovely genre. And it does reveal a lot about one's, A, oneself, but it also does give you a peek into the zeitgeist, like you said. I love that you said that. And I think that's why things like American Horror Story are very pertinent, because he he's kind of going out of his way now to make to make it pertinent now. I, I mean, I I may or may not have heard that this next season uh, is about the AIDS crisis. Ooh. Yeah. Which yeah. It is. A, it was it, a horror. It is. It was a horror. a horror. It is a horror, and they're, they're going to do more on that. You know, he did, he did election and all things like that. So it's yeah. always he always tries to make it very pertinent, which but it works. Uh, not for me. Not I'm for not you. a Ryan Murphy. Oh, you're not a Ryan Murphy. I I I I I enjoy the genre. I enjoy the franchise. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I enjoy. I, I, know I enjoy the first like three him. episodes of every season of the franchise, <laughs> three or four. I feel like he starts with a great idea, and then he leaves the writers' room, and he doesn't tell them anything about where it's going, and then it's up to them to try to some tie up. Some seasons they get it right, and some seasons it, they don't. That's and that's fair. Some are much better. My Roanoke others. Nightmare. They got it right. Which one? My Roanoke Nightmare. Okay. They got it right. A lot of people shit on that one, but that's my favorite. They did something different. It, first, that was off. the first time they changed the format. Yes, changed yeah. the format. Yeah, very good casting. Angela Bassett as Scream Queen. Come on, that was. Why did it take her so long to do? She had done. Well, she had. Mary Laveau. She was Mary Laveau. Right, right, right. Yeah. But even before that, I think the only horror movie she'd done was Vampire in Brooklyn, with Eddie Murphy. Oh, yeah, but does that yeah. count as? I mean, it's horror, horror yeah. comedy romance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Horror kid, and even. It, it, it's so. It's so. Do you find it odd to find whenever I scroll through Netflix and see Death Becomes Her under horror? Do you ever get a little? You ever get a little? A little he did, I think we as gays would not consider that a horror movie. It is, it is high. Camp. But now that you mention it, it might have to be another episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let me ask you this: What is your what is your earliest uh, horror movie memory? If I think about the first horror film that I watched with my mother, it, was, it would be Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, but one of the later ones, it must have been, it was late 80s, so it must have been like four or five. I think it's four. It's the one where Freddy Krueger, I remember the one where Freddy Krueger, uh, the head comes out of the bathtub. Is that four? The hand comes out head. of the bathtub? Head. Where she's taking, she's taking a, a, a bath and, okay. like, and he comes up uh, out, of the t- out of the tub. His hand comes his up head. in the first one between her no, legs, but, but I don't remember. I, I can't picture the one There's one where head. his head actually comes up out of the water. All right. And I remember that specifically because I was terrified to take a shot, to take a bath after that. Mm. That is That is my earliest memory of horror. I mean... I'd be afraid of a bath after that, too. It was terrifying. Yeah. It, it, it took a minute. It's not the kind of head you want in a bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> not from Freddy. I, you know, but now that I've lived in New York for, for many years, I've learned that any head is head. Girl. <laughs> I'll pray for you. Thank you. And I'm not a praying man. <laughs> um, you know, for me, my, my earliest horror movie memory, and maybe it's not considered horror, but it is a monster movie, King fucking kong oh, the wow. original was on tv i re- i must have been under five and i vividly remember being and maybe another sympathetic monster yeah right yeah but i was scared to hell of king oh, kong wow. um to the point that when we went to chuck e cheese and that uh band is a rock of fire band is that that Keyboard playing gorilla, I and, the, and the hands are just flopping. Oh. They're like flopping, like it's climbing the Empire State Building. Oh, just and he's purple. Terrifying. I and think he's he purple. was purple. Oh, I had nightmares. They would sell stuffed animals of 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 him, and they would like hang on the walls of Chuck E. Cheese. I remember having a vivid nightmare of his, uh, all of those stuffed animals coming to my bed and picking me up and carrying me away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but I think you know. So I, I have that memory. But I got to say. That the original Halloween is my favorite horror film. Oh yeah. Um, I don't care if it's cliche. It's it's so many people's favorite for a reason. It is. I I do love it. You know, I actually love the second one better. So the second one is 
excellent. Yeah. The second one follows the slasher format more than the first one. Correct. Three I years just, later, they. You, you know, I really love it for the for the scene where they boil the two two nurses. Oh my it god! Really, is my favorite scene. I've Ooh. never been so terrified. It's, it's so, so gross. gross. It's so gross. skins falling off. Oh, I love it. It's nasty. It's well done. Nasty, nasty. <laughs> there are some well good done. kills in that one. There are really good and kills. and a really bad wig on Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but she does a killer job. Well, I really like how her wig in this new movie. the new upcoming film. Do we have to talk about the new we ones? We, well, we definitely don't need to talk about the last one that we saw. I'm the, the, mm. I, apparently. Appar- I heard then that that they're going to sandwich them, like because they definitely Jamie Lee Curtis was she was she filmed for like three days on that last film. Yeah, she she's, <laughs> she's I mean literally phoning it in with that phone call at the end, hearing Michael breathe. No, I don't think she phoned it in, but she was given nothing she was to do. Nothing. 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 I, I heard, don't know. I can't. I don't know if that was her. Not wanting anything to do, or if that was just a script. I feel I feel it was them not knowing what story they were going to tell or how they're going to end it. Yeah. So, or or that she signed up for three movies and they only had two. Sure. So, uh, the, the Halloween Kills is filler. Halloween Kills is one of the worst films I've seen in my whole life. I've never. I, I can't I, believe I paid money for it, but it was during oof. pandemic, so I had money. I. So I was so looking forward to it. I was in rehab, girl, when that oh, movie girl. came out. So it was waiting for me on, uh, I think it was Peacock when I got out. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. Ooh, I'm glad I didn't spend money. I was, I was actually quite angry. When, 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 it, when it ended, I, w- I actually threw the remote. Yeah. I was, I was furious. I've never seen so many interesting ideas so poorly implemented. It was horrible. I don't think the premise was that bad. Okay. The movie just didn't work. Like, bring bring Kyle Richards back, right? Bring yeah. Tommy Doyle. If we couldn't get the original man who played Tommy Doyle, or they, they reached out to Paul Rudd because he played Tommy in um, no. Curse of Michael Myers, Curse of Michael Myers, and it was oh, a scheduling thing. That. Yeah, it was his first movie. Yeah, before Clueless. And the little boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was a oh, that was a I terrifying love one. that one. You know, that I have the Curse of terrifying. Thorn tattoo on my wrist right Look here. Look at her. Get, all right, so not only that, it's off to the right. You should t- t- take take a photo of that. And, and put it on your Instagram. We, on you, Insta. we, we, we have to see this. This is actually the, really quite cool. In the unreleased, well, only recently produ- uh, released producer's cut, oh. which is a darker version, but a more cohesive version of the movie, okay. it gets fucked up. Like, oh, there's wow. like some kind of incest rape, and it's just like Jamie is Michael's daughter. It's very... Um, that's, that's, no, no, that's no. Michael, necessary... Michael impregnates Jamie. That's it. So the baby that they're protecting is Michael's child. That's unnecessary. They cut it all. Yeah. But anyway, at the end of that, Dr. Loomis... Oh, is that Loomis, when they're coming with a the, with the child? Oh, that makes a lot of sense. They killed Jamie off. Daniel Harris wanted, uh, didn't want to die like that after, you know, doing... But is, is the next so film... they recast the, her. Is the next film with the girl with the, in the clown suit and with the knife? So that's the end of four. That's the end of and four. Return of Michael, Return Michael, of Michael Myers. Okay. Then after that, Revenge of Michael Myers, where Jamie is in, like, a home for... Um, a di- mentally disabled children kind of getting over some trauma yeah um, and then at the end she's carried off by this secret society that's going to try to weaponize Michael Myers they jump the shark on this they really jump you know, we're not 80s. even talking about Halloween <laughs> we are going to do a Halloween episode in a yes. couple of weeks yeah um, but so where we're getting I the the placement of my my Curse of Thorn tattoo is to the right which is where it is on Dr. Loomis at the end of that original <gasps> producer's cut spoiler oh. alert um Dr. Loomis, Dr. Loomis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, all right. Well, let me let me ask you. How was this week? Was this week a trick or a treat for you? Uh, this week was a was a bit of a a, tr- a treat. Uh, I, I I I'm dog. I'm a dog sitter. It's, it's, you know, that's what I do. Yeah, and hang I out with favorite, your people. Oh, my favorite dog is this week, and he's wonderful. And he's such a a snuggle bug and and a, and a, and a kooky, crazy dog. I love him. Uh, but that's been good. I've been pretty busy. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's been a treat. That's How about cute. your week? Have you, has your week been a treat? It was a treat. I just finished a staged reading of oh, I saw a, um, a musical, a new musical about uh, opioid addiction and recovery. And I got to play, this was my actually, my first production out of, like in my own personal recovery journey. Oh, wow. And um, really meaningful. I got to play someone who is actively in recovery, an I outreach counselor. This. Killer music love and um, very great story. Incredibly, incredibly talented cast. I got to say, I'm very proud of this show and the work Wonderful. that I did. I do hope. I know it doesn't usually work out this way, but if the show does continue, I would love to come back to, to it. You just have to hope. Uh, but why weren't you there? When was it? Mm-hmm. When was it? Uh huh. When was it? Last night, girl, <laughs> oh. and yesterday afternoon. Uh, last night was uh oh. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. I didn't think I knew about it. Mm-hmm. I didn't think I knew what it was. But I was watching um, uh, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, if that helps. Uh, yeah, yeah, all sorry. right. All right. That's an excuse. I'll take it. <laughs> I will take it. So, yeah, that was my that was my treat of a she week. She put me on sure. blast on fucking podcast. You heard it here first. She brought me here to roast me. Yep. Um... You know, I also saw some good horror too. I um, I saw Pearl and Barbarian in theaters. You know, you you, you told me about Barbarian, and I, and I need to watch it. Oh, I, need to watch it. I, I do need to watch. It. You know, I I just rewatched the ending of of Stranger Things. Just strictly the ending, because I wa- I watched it with our friend Colin, uh, and Colin who's insisted she? <laughs> who's she? <laughs> Co- Colin insisted that we watch both at the same time. The, and that's four hours yeah. of, of Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. Which and you'd is, already seen it. Which is fine. No, I'd not seen it. Oh. It was four hours. This, this, this is when it first was dropped. Yeah, okay. Uh, and um, I'm 40. Uh, and I I, 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 it's because I moisturize. Mm-hmm. It's because I moisturize. Um, and I couldn't make it through. I made it through most of the first one. And I slept through almost the entire second half. Oh. Uh, so uh, this week I was like, I should probably figure out what how it ended, how it actually ended. So I rewatched it. What did, uh, I I thought that this was the last season. Me too. The entire time. Me too. I was convinced. I don't. I felt like I thought I had read it somewhere. Yeah. And I was telling too. my roommate like, yeah. Oh man, it's this all going to end. This is the end. And yeah. then it ends the way it did. And it I makes was, sense. I mean, on my phone immediately. What the hell? <laughs> four hours of, 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 of content. You're like, Oh, this has to be the end. Yeah. Is, so what the fuck fuck are we gonna have for the the next one? Oh, we're gonna have to explicit now. Uh, six hours of, of content. Well, I I I, I believe all of the longer episode, the lengthier episodes came from having more time during quarantine to flesh things out uh, i think another podcast that i listened to kind of had that as a theory i'm sorry i can't credit you because i can't remember which one it was someone yeah not you, not you thanks for that theory yeah. right because yeah. i do think that it it was effective we got a lot of um time with characters you know what honestly i cared more about the new characters this season than i did did you our old ones yeah eddie come on uh Oh, Eddie was Dungeons a great, and Dragons that was guitar a great, playing like he's the the, the 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 father scene at the end was wonderful. Father scene when when um when the kid was was telling him how he died. Oh yeah, that was a lovely moment. Oh my god, really yeah. Oh, I moment. forgot about that. Yeah, because yeah. he was like villainized in the town. Yeah. Oh, and I he's totally like, forgot. No, he, this is how he, this is how he went down, and this is how he lived. This is who he was. Yeah, I loved it. Man, I I would love to see him again. I hope they don't bring him back. It, I feel like I mean, it if could they bring be, him back, that's something. I mean, serious. they brought Billy back. If they bring him, listen. If they bring him back, they bring Barb back. Uh, they they alluded to that this season. I I would love to see her again. I, she didn't get. Uh, they didn't know that she was going to be such a sensation, especially amongst the queers. Why yeah. do we cling to her so much? We just <laughs> we just do did we just do that? When to we our see girl. it, we see it. Yeah. We saw it in her. You know. <laughs> I almost went as her for Halloween, and then I almost went as Joyce with Christmas lights around my neck, running around screaming, I have to find my boy! Will! Will! Um, yeah, yeah, but, um, yeah, cool. Well, yeah, you listen, check out Barbarian. I will not spoil I anything. Will. Don't watch the trailer. Okay. Don't read the synopsis. I it. went in as blind as I could. Is it only movie. in theaters or is it streaming somewhere? I, I believe it's only in theaters right now. Okay. All right. Um... I would love to talk to you about it, right. whether it's on the pod or not. After I don't know, I don't know if I'll see it this week, but I'll see it soon. Yeah, I um, it's a fun one to watch, like in a theater with people. All right, definitely. Okay. Um, All right. and then Pearl, prequel to X, Ty West. Did you see X earlier this summer? No. This summer was killer for horror. We had X. Uh, Orphan, First Kill, Barbarian. We had like all of these really like surprising out of nowhere movies. So I, think X, I saw Ty- one horror film in the theater. Um, that has to be something else. Is Ty- it Scream? Because that was, was I that saw, March. That, that was, okay, that was, that was, that was we can count. Uh, yeah, I yeah, saw yeah. Scream, but there's something else this summer I saw. Mm. I don't remember. Well, oh, maybe so it was X more. was an uh, yeah. unexpected slasher. It takes place in the 70s about pornographers. Uh, who rent a farm to film a, a dirty movie called The Farmer's Daughter, and shit hits the fan. And it's Ty West who did um, The Innkeeper and um, House of the Devil. He's got this really great track record with not copying kind of exploitation era horror, yeah. um, but really paying homage to it in ways that honestly Rob Zombie 
kind of fails at. He's not like that. That, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That right. um, so X came out. Everyone loved it. And then at the end of the credits, there was a trailer for a completely secret movie. It's filmed it all during quarantine. So they got they got both of them greenlit at the same time and filmed oh, wow. both of them in New Zealand while everybody was still quarantined. And you, you know, they got while they New had Zealand? and it's a prequel taking place like fifty plus years uh, earlier, oh. um, about this character Pearl. Yeah. Um, also played by Mia Goth, who is a revelation in this. She was great in X because she plays Maxine and old, old Pearl in old, old makeup. Okay. Now in Pearl, she plays Pearl 50 years earlier when she was young and completely different film. It's not gritty. It's okay. not dark. It is technicolor. It looks like The Wizard of Oz. Oh my if God. you mix, I, I, uh, I compared it to Whatever Happened to Baby Jane mixed with Wizard of Oz mixed with Psycho. If you put that in a blender, you've got this bizarre... So camp, so camp, camp horror. Camp to the max. <laughs> Color palette of <laughs> Gone with the Wind. A sweeping score right oh out of that goodness. era. I have I to mean, see this. Yeah, but see X first. Okay. This is your assignment. Okay. All right. Right. And you too, dear listeners. Uh, and then check out Pearl and see Pearl in movie theaters because I do think it's beautiful on screen. All right. Um, very different tones in the two movies. Yes. Um, but they're supposed to be. And then stick around at the end credits of Pearl for another cool surprise right. that is definitely worth sticking surprise. around for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But listen, so um, why don't we... Talk about the subject at hand. Okay. Happy birthday to me. Oh, for Directed your by J. Lee Thompson. Uh, this is someone who had quite a track record before this movie. This Cape was Cape uh, Fear. Cape Fear, the original yeah. Cape Fear. One of the one of the Planet of the Apes. One of the Planet of the Apes sequels. Yeah. Um, unexpected when this came out that this director took this or made this choice. It was written by John Saxton, Peter Jobbin. Timothy Bond and an uncredited, uh, like, kind of writing position for John Baird. Beard. Um, but the producers of this film were John Dunning and Andre Link. Uh, this was part of kind of the Canuxploitation era, Canadian exploitation horror. Oh, they also dirty. did around about the same time, uh, My Bloody Valentine, the original. Oh. And you can see the similar tones. I, I do... wonder why so many of the actors were Canadian. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Filmed in, um, oh crap! I think I know. I know any of the actors, not one of them. Um, well, surprise! Uh, the uh, the actress who plays a Virginia Virgin Wainwright, aka <laughs> Ginny, is Melissa Sue Anderson. She was uh, Mary Ingalls on Little House on the Prairie. I never watched that shit. I didn't either. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I know enough about it to know that this is a great departure from any of the subject matter on that TV yes, show. Yes, um, yeah. it's, I feel like it's kind of like Miley Cyrus giving the finger to Hannah Montana. Right? <laughs> Which she did multiple times. She did multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, very big departure from it. Um, you know, the only other recognizable cast member to me is Glenn Ford, who had and he plays uh, Dr. David Faraday, her psychiatrist in this movie. Okay. Um, the, the, the shrink um, who had a, a, a more prestige. He was in Gilda um, he did. He had a very good career before this. Apparently, he was drunk the whole time. Um, of the in the movie of filming this of movie. This movie, yeah, um, and was picking fights with people on the set. I do love that. Um, you know, the thing about this movie, there are too many damn characters. There are a lot of characters. <laughs> so, basic premise is um, at a uh, kind of like a, a fancy high school. I thought it was, I, I I didn't even know whether it was high school or like college because they don't tell you. I had to look the, this the scars up. were the scars were very yeah, um, they are not, uh, confusing to me. Twelfth graders, They're right? 12th at a very graders. prestigious school. Um, that, 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 that explains some of the some of the action. This movie doesn't explain a lot. No, I mean the notebook. It's all it's all, it's all shock factor. The notebook that I was trying to keep up with, it, yeah. it, it, it's all chicken scratch because none of it makes sense. Yeah. There's too much story, but we'll get to that. Too much um, exposition. The, there is um, kind of this clique called the Top Ten, and mm -hmm. they are kind of um, the most successful, maybe the certainly the most privileged, uh, the wealthiest of this school, mm -hmm. um, and they're very well known for pranking each other mm -hmm. and pranking other people, right? And they get away with everything. Why? Because they're rich, because they're white, because white. they're straight. Um, they're like two black people in this film. No, yeah. And they're um, all extras. They're all extras. <laughs> they're way in the background. Yeah. Um, ten 
characters who I will list now, but I'm not going to list the actors. I'm going to do my best throughout this episode to keep track of who dies and how. God bless. But, oh, lordy, all right. So we have Ginny, our um, lead Okay. Maybe one of the worst final girls in history. I of was her. curious of her of, of her final girl status. Yeah. Um, we have um, Anne. Okay. Alfie or Alfred, Steve, Maggie, Rudy, Greg, Bernadette, and Amelia. We're gonna move on, right? There's also um, I think I think we've already known too much. <laughs> there's a woman named Mrs. Patterson who works at the school. We have Is that the bitch? Um, the Sharon Acker hates? plays Ginny's mom, Estelle. Oh god, she should get an academy. My award. favorite character in she should, this movie. She should get an academy award. Oh, um, and she then she was giving um, you something. Uh, Ginny's dad, Hal or Harold. Um, but you know, we'll get to him. Uh, opening with what I didn't realize is a cold open. I thought the movie started and this character Bernadette was going to be the lead. Oh yeah, it was it, it was it was a tone a tone setter. Yeah, uh, too almost a little bit like Scream for me. Yeah. That yeah, when yeah. she bites the dust, yeah. I didn't I didn't know that that was the direction it was headed. Yeah. Um, I love <laughs> when she trips on the Mrs. Patterson's dog leash. It, did you see this? It, like it almost like Catwoman with a whip just yes. like wraps around I her leg. That's what it was. Uh, yeah. I, I, there's so many. Um. I don't. Was that an intentional? Yeah. throw you off thing yeah, like yeah, someone's yeah. attacking her they, 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 they did quite a bit of that they did that in, in, in that open and then they did it for uh, a, a few a couple of the, the kill scenes yeah the Winston the dog my favorite line in the movie is when she Bernadette is mocking the, the woman says like come along Winston get me home and uh, Bernadette in, as she walks away says come along Winston give mommy head yeah um, yeah out of nowhere, I instantly fell in love with Bernadette, which breaks my heart two seconds later when she gets in her car and from behind a pair of leather gloves reaches around her neck and starts choking her. And I gotta say, I've been choked by some leather gloves in my day. Oh, you, oh uh, so, so the, is it sponsored by the Eagle? <laughs> Maybe. I, sh- I should look into it. Maybe I'll ask them. Ask them. I'm, sure, um, I'm, I'm sure they have your number. Never in the backseat of a car. She gets dragged to the backseat of the car. She's able to fight it off she gets the door kicked open and she crawls out runs 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 and then stops moving right runs again and bumps into somebody and says um oh it's you yeah oh thank god thank god please help me so we're instantly put into a kind of an agatha christie-esque yeah what yeah like i thought i thought that very same thing who done it yeah you know um, and the leather gloves are there. And leather, it's, it's that's just, very it's giallo. That's very Italian horror, right? Yeah. Fulci yeah. and um, uh, Bava, mm-hmm. uh, that whole era of like a, a blade in a leather glove, and that's I just all recognize that you from see. Days of Our Lives. Huh? I, I just recognize from Days of Our Lives. And Days of Our Well, <laughs> you don't have much of a life going on. You get to sit at home and watch your little soaps. I used to, used to, yeah. used to. No I was more. hooked on. I think it was Guiding Light when I was a kid. Everyone, I was homeschooled everyone, for a few years. You were, which explains everything. It explains a lot. Um, and we would watch Dark Shadows, and then we would watch Guiding Light. Dark Shadows were amazing. Mm-hmm. But everyone, everyone has one soap opera in their life. Agreed. Totally agreed. So now Bernadette thinks she's safe, um, but this gloved hand. All right. Instead of like calling it a gloved hand, moving forward, we're just going to call it. Leather gloves. That is <laughs> <laughs> that is the name of our unknown killer. Leather gloves. Much the, like Leatherface. Yes, like the Chainsaw Massacre. I'd love that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so pulls out a blade and very quickly slashes her throat. Very Sweeney Todd like. Very quick. <laughs> that's true. Attend. The, no, you're very right. Attend the tail. That's not actually. That's not actually wrong. Uh, this was one of the kills that uh, was edited. Uh, originally, blood was to gush out of her neck. Uh, like they did in Sweeney Todd. L- much much like Sweeney Todd. Uh, yes. There were a number of edits to this film that were made to avoid an X rating. Um, oh, how interesting. Yeah. So as a, as That's a, interesting. As absurd as the amount of blood that it is in this movie, there was more. <laughs> um, well, there's a lot of splattered blood. There's like there's like Jackson Pollock blood in this film. That's true, and you, but yeah. you don't you don't necessarily see the kills happening. You see kind of like the after effect. Yeah, it's, they're building a picture. They're, they're, it's picture, picture, picture. It's beautiful. A lot of old horror films do that, right? That's true. Well, that's what makes yeah. Texas Chainsaw so effective. You don't actually see a chainsaw go into anybody. It always cuts yeah. away just before it happens. In fact, 
uh, Toby Hooper was going for a G rating, allegedly. That's the rumor that, like, oh, yeah. Wow. Now, of course, we, I, I would love a G rated horror film. <laughs> well, I really seen, would. There's an Instagram artist, I can't remember who it is, but it's called Horror Babies. And he, like, he kind of makes these cute little almost Muppet baby like um, drawings of, of our favorite slashers. Horror baby, da, 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 da. I, I can't think of the lyrics. That was really, I uh, will make your dreams come true, which would work for <laughs> Freddy Krueger. Uh, also, my, my good friend. <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't know and that's you know a lot of people i guess who are listening jason's a very talented vocalist and oh, actress so kind. and um that's well that's how we know one another from um yes from the streets from the the theatrical streets yes it's the street <laughs> she's always taking my parts <laughs> have i no never once were you supposed to be in Porgy and Bess? <laughs> No. no okay, there's... I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> um, all right, so we have cut away from Bernadette, who I had grown to like in her short, short lifespan. Um, and we cut to an, an inn, and it's called The Silent Woman. And we get a close up of the sign for this inn, and it's a headless lady. <gasps> bum, um, bum. Boom, boom, boom. And this is where the top 10 meets every night to get drunk and act like fools yes uh so much like harry potter and the gang meet at the uh where the, their gang at their place was that the um i forget i, I forget i i was trying to think of it as i was coming up with it and it, it, it never came up is it move broomstick on. no no okay all right no, we'll move remember. on the three broomsticks yeah. i don't know i that missed... makes sense that, yeah that yeah yeah that might be it that all right yeah 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 um so we're at we're at the inn and we are introduced to the top 10 whose names i have Already told um, just a little bit ago. I'm not going okay. through that again. There's too yeah, many. Yeah, a lot. Them. Too many. <laughs> and they all die. And they, they they talk about Bernadette. They miss her for about two seconds. And then they move on. <laughs> little do they know she's <laughs> her body, her corpse is being dragged somewhere. Um, oh, poor Bernadette. But Alfred, who is kind of the weirdest one of the group, asks Ginny if he can buy her a drink. And she says, absolutely not. This is one thing. Uh, the drinking age in this movie. These are all 12th graders. Yeah. And they're drinking but what state is this in uh so filmed in canada but it takes place in massachusetts parts of it were filmed in upstate new york but it officially is set in massachusetts but because 1981 I know that, yeah but i know the drinking age in new york was was um younger because my friend who i grew up with um her mother told i grew, I grew up in massachusetts by the way uh she told me that she would come to new york and come drink that, it was legal. Yeah, it, I think it was so, '83 when it okay. changed to 21, like federally. The way that it should be. I mean, but the kids, American kids, are so um, irresponsible. So it probably wouldn't work anyway. No, there, there's no absolutely, absolutely no way that anyone would get anything done. And children's no. brains are still developing at that young age. And 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 drinking kills brain cells. It, yeah. Drink don't, water, kids. Don't Drink I know water. it? <laughs> <laughs> Drink your water. Uh, Drink so water. Alfred, uh, and the, so there's um, the local Shriners are hanging out at this inn as well, and they're singing and being weird as Shriners do. I don't really know what Shriners are. Um, I used to know because I used to work with them. Um, I don't remember anymore. It's all right. All I picture is Bye Bye Birdie with um, uh, the 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 number in the movie with Janet Lee. Um, Anyway, so Alfred. What the, number is that? Um, it takes place downstairs. Okay. Oh, and, move on. Move. <laughs> okay, great. Oh, uh, Spanish Rose. Yeah, Spanish yeah, Rose. yeah. That's the one. So Alfred, yeah, the yeah. weirdo, pulls out a rat from his pocket. This rat's name is George, and everyone fawns over this rat. No one brings up the fact that it's fucking weird to carry a rat in your pocket. Um, even today. Even today, but so then post, um, post COVID, it's weird to carry a rat. So I had a pet rat when I was younger. His name was Wally, and um, he was very sweet. Rats are very social creatures. You're, like, you're looking at me on the camera right now, like I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm looking. At, I'm looking dead in your face. They can't see it, but they can certainly feel it. I can feel that icy stare. No, he was very sweet. Rats are social creatures. Children should it's never. More, it's be, more concern. <laughs> children should never it's more be given concern for your well-being. Hamsters. Hamsters are mean. They're social uh, solo creatures. They don't like to be touched. You know what? This poor rat. Goes, rats like to be touched. They, I've seen rats. They run in at packs. Three a.m. in the morning. They run in packs, though. You know what? I'm not going to try to convince you to buy a rat. Um, Please don't. <laughs> um, so, but poor George goes missing, and he goes missing because one of these top ten has taken um, 
poor George. And as he fake apologizes to the Shriners for getting into a fight with them, the Shriner takes a sip of his beer, and George the Rat is in the beer. Drowning. Drowning. Where was Peter? Where, Where was, was Peter? <laughs> it was long before you got that little disclaimer at the end of the credits saying that all the animals were treated... Uh, like humanely, humanely, or no animals, were, no animals were harmed in the making of this film. No, the animals in this film were intoxicated. Were harmed. They were harmed. <laughs> they were harmed. They were harmed. Well, not not unlike the, the, mos- the last mosquito that bit me that that is now at the Betty Ford Clinic. No, okay, Patsy or Edie. You're welcome. Edie. <laughs> no, that's Patsy. Is You're it right. Patsy? You're right Man, the first time. Yeah. I miss that show. If you, if, you, if you don't get your if you don't get your AbFab quotes correct, I'm going to come through this computer and and strangle you. This is a horror podcast, not an AbFab. <laughs> No, you're right. You're right. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm ashamed of myself. Um, all right. So the the fake apology to the Shriners, and uh, they've bought this. They call him a lead wizard, which really weirds me out. Um, and so all the kids run out laughing. And um, Etienne, who is like this French foreign exchange student, a member of the top ten, mm-hmm. is like staring creepily at Ginny. Mm-hmm. Um, that will make sense in a little bit. So while all the kids are getting in their cars, they, it's a setup. Uh, while all the kids are getting up. in their cars, they see a drawbridge lifting in the distance, and they all start getting excited. They decide to play quote the game, which is basically chicken, right? Yes. They're all going to yes. drive over this drawbridge, and um, whoever doesn't make it is, I don't know, a rotten egg or something. Did you do anything stupid like this when you were a kid? We I would mean, I'm play. Sure. We would have we would call them fire drills, and at a red light, we would all oh, yeah. get out of the car, and we would all run and like and f- trade different seats, and then get back in before the light turned green again. Uh, not I had a pickup truck, so we would try to shove a bunch oh. of people in the back of the truck, but really, nothing like nothing outright dangerous where we were trying to get killed. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, nothing, nothing crazy like that. That's that's that, that. This is insane. Yeah, I saved all of my really bad choices for my twenties. <laughs> And that as well was a long time ago. Uh, how very dare you. <laughs> I'll always be younger than you. But not by too much. <laughs> no, that's true. You're very right. <laughs> so at this point, Anne, our top 10 member, Anne, shoves Ginny into a car. Ginny doesn't want to do it. And they race, race, race to the bridge. And Ginny freaks the fuck out. Like, mm. The only person who's having an appropriate reaction to this. But, however, she's trying to escape from a moving car. She opens. She screams, "Mother!" and she tries to open the car door and jump out, which is complete madness. I mean, it's wild. It's. I mean, I, 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 I even in the worst situations, even if I was being kidnapped, I don't know if I would escape from a a, a, a quickly moving car. No, no. I picture a slow in, moving car. Yes. I picture in Sister Act when the little redheaded nun just like jumps oh out and tucks goodness. and rolls. <laughs> That's what I'm picturing. It's amazing that she knew how to do that. I mean, because 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 Whoopi only gave her like a. a, a light notion yeah. on, on the, how to do that. It's, when, that's when, a wild scene. When Whoopi tells you to do something, you, you, you do it. You do it. <laughs> yeah. You do it. Um, all right. So at the at, in the end, Stephen chickens out. He doesn't make it over the bridge. But when the car lands, it totals. Like the entire front yeah. end of this car is the, smashed. Yeah. And then in the next shot, it looks perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Um, it's movie magic. Movie magic. At that some point, movie magic. Ugh, sing to me, baby. <laughs> At some point, one of the stunt doubles for this film doing a car stunt broke both of their ankles. Wow, you can't li- You can't do much after when you no. bro- break your ankles. No, it reminds me of like Spider Man: Turn Off the Dark. That actor who broke both of their wrists. Your career is changed forever. You're, it's, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Um. So after this, Ginny. Uh, uh, she goes to visit her mother's grave, middle of the night. Something that people do, I guess. This is uh, her and Cinderella. She kneels. Yeah, <laughs> she's, Jenny's not singing about it. <laughs> Jenny um, kneels down, and she starts telling her dead mom how popular she is, and oh, how wow. all these kids really like her, and she'd be very proud of her. And she pulls out a pair of gardening shears that are in a box next to the grave, and she's just. Mm-hmm trimming the grass around the grave um these are these will prove to be Chekhov's gardening shear <laughs> um because the loaded gun the loaded gun uh the sharpened garden shears um and she hears footsteps behind her and she runs off and etienne from before grabs her uh really creepily he's just a weirdo and offers to walk her home so Ginny gets home. She goes into the door, and her dad's here. 
Okay, this is a weird scene. Oh, man. Their little greeting, their little kiss on the lips is like half a second too long. It's like a soap, it's like a soap opera kiss. Yeah. It's like John and Marlena like reunited again. It was so <laughs> disgusting. I'm really glad I was not the only one who picked up on this. But <laughs> I think it's going to come into play. I think that Ginny has some kind of daddy issue because she has a very weird relationship with her therapist as well, Dr. David, who we'll meet in just a little bit. Um and so d- her dad says uh, that they agreed that they wouldn't visit, she wouldn't visit the mom's grave anymore. They had just moved back into this old house, right? Something bad has happened, and they moved away, and um, and he he didn't want to move back, but I guess for, it never really explains why. And Ginny says that Dr. David has told her, until I stop repressing what happened, I won't be completely cured. So this movie drops a lot of little hints at things, and it takes yeah, forever to explain any of it. A lot of suspicion. A, a lot, lot of, suspicion, of suspicion. A lot of red herrings. Too many red herrings. And red herrings <laughs> that don't last very long. Yeah, they're quick. Very quick. We have like three acts of red herrings. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, so we cut to a Halloween-esque first-person camera view, right? Like we're looking through someone's eyes. Um, and, um, this person climbs the trellis up the, up the side of the house. Ginny goes upstairs to her room. She turns on some jazzercise music and she's slowly, slowly, slowly taking off her clothes. Um, like it's gratuitous, but it's not sexy either. (laughs) And she, she, it just needs to happen for, for the murderer to be beckoned. That's well, I, I guess. Um, because we're just now getting to that Wes Craven era of horror where the, the, the if you get naked or have sex, the murder's coming. That's true. Yeah. That's yeah. well. This particular person who I, it should be no surprise who it is. I don't know why they tried to make anybody wonder because Etienne just walked her home. Yeah. Um, she takes off her panties last, and they're embroidered oh. with a flower. It's they're not cute panties. It's weird. It's disgusting. They're, and they're granny panties too. Total granny panties. They, they're like they're like like wider than her hips. So we get the impression <laughs> we get the impression <laughs> that someone's watching from inside of her closet. She doesn't see them. Um, but although no wonder she wanted to move back to this house. That closet space was killer and she has you a, know, I, w- I would risk a murder or two for a good closet space i would do anything my, i would I'm do a lot of things looking around my tiny house kitchen apartment and her closet was bigger than my bedroom <laughs> correct <laughs> uh, and yeah. she gets her own giant bathroom too with a bathtub and ugh, i'm jealous i want the bedroom from uh uh clueless Sure. Oh, the closet from Clueless. Absolutely. I'd kill for that. I'd kill for that. Wow. That, that's my that's my horror movie. Are you the killer? Are you leather gloves? It's very, po- <laughs> it's very, it's very possible. Uh, don't, don't look behind me. So while Ginny is in the bathroom, someone comes out of the closet and jump, uh, climbs out the window. And Ginny screams. Um, and we see Etienne fall from the roof and he runs away. So this whole time we were not supposed to know that it's Etienne spying on her, I guess, even though he just walked her home. French people are so sneaky. <laughs> They're so sneaky. No comment. They're like, oh, come eat some like frog legs and like it's delicious. Well, but yeah. At first you know. I thought that they were making the foreign exchange student the weirdo and that that was, you know, a bad thing. But there's a lot of weirdo guys in this movie. All yeah. the guys are weirdos. Even the teachers. Even the teachers. Yeah. Even um, the fathers. The, the creepy, rapey fathers. Well, and so speaking of weirdo teachers, the next day... Um, the kids have gotten scolded by Mrs. Patterson because Bernadette's missing and no one seems to care. She thinks that it's a prank. (laughs) Mrs. Patterson is the only person with any sense in this goddamn movie, and she disappears halfway through. Uh, She vanishes. She makes one last scene. We'll we'll talk about that in a bit. We meet a French science teacher, and they have this weird static electricity moment where they reanimate uh, dead frog's legs. Another red herring. Right, right, right. And he even waves them in someone's face, and then he statically shocks another kid with, like, animated with the, electricity special yeah. effects. Um, I've never seen static electricity, like, sh- actually, that's a lie. I have seen a little bit of spark with static electricity. Does it, it happen? Can. It can happen. Wow. It can happen, yeah. It's quick. It's quick. The world is a magical place. It really is. It um, really is. But so all of this science talk gives Ginny a flashback. Uh, of her getting an MRI or a CAT scan or something of her brain. 
uh, and the doctor tells her dad that there's new brain tissue developing, and she sits up and she says, my b- birthday, and that's it. We learn um, that there was like an experimental brain tissue replacement procedure going on. Mm-hmm. It's unclear what happened to her or why she needed it. It's probably because she watched this fucking movie. <laughs> Um, TV rots your brain. Yeah. That's the, era, that's the era that we're in. That's the lesson that we're watching or <laughs> lesson that we're learning. Uh, but so Ginny says she feels like an experiment or a guinea pig or, as I like to say, a Ginny pig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I was really proud of that one. <laughs> All right. Good for so, you, Miss. Um, Cut to a motocross race. <laughs> <laughs> totally out of nowhere we're watching a motocross race with dirt bikers and everyone's there because they're such good friends these top tens and it's a thrilling sequence and uh uh someone tries to kick etienne off of his bike and then they crash into the water um that happened to me the one time that i rode a dirt bike it was my cousin's dirt bike and oh my I, god i think i ruined it i like Spot, went out of control and crashed into like ramped into some water and uh this is why i wish that we used to had uh iphones back then I th- <laughs> go viral <laughs> this, i think that's the last time i saw that cousin actually i was like 12 <laughs> listen cousin cousin can come and go yeah i guess we, we we usually have like 10 or 20 of them that can that can just be disposable oh i wouldn't call them disposable but i think that i was disposable after i wrecked their bike you were uh, disposable well you were disposable cousin so i'm not wrong you're, oh shit Damn it. <laughs> uh, so Etienne wins. Don't, put, don't keep yourself on the good side. Keep yourself on the bad side. Know, your, know, know your place, mess. Well, you are great at reminding me of it. You're welcome. <laughs> That's so why I'm here. Etienne wins the race um, because the top ten are winners, right? Um, and so everybody plans to meet at the silent lady. And they all run off. But Etienne walks up to Ginny. And Jason, what does Etienne do? What does he reach into his jacket pocket and pull out? Her panties is the granny panties. The granny, the pink, flowery. Gra- I literally have seen these in my grandmother's arsenal. Oh God! Well, literally. I hope there are no French foreign exchange students hanging out around your granny. It's possible there are. It's possible that there are. It's very possible. Um, but he he tells her that they were in his jacket next to his heart for good luck, and it's fucking weird. Now Alfred God, sees this. <laughs> Alfred sees this, uh, and he just he clearly disapproves. Um, and we, you know, he's al- <laughs> he's already been turned down by Jenny for a drink, um, but he's he's not happy about this. Etienne says that he's going to join everybody after he cleans up his bike. Right. So here's a red herring of Etienne being a weirdo, and then yes. we immediately cut to his death scene. <laughs> like there's no there's no chance for us to try to put two the wrong two and two together because yeah, it, yeah it's like it's, it's a bunch of it's a it's a three one acts of red herring yeah it's, a, it's the strangest horror film. We cut to Etienne's garage, and his tire is spinning real real fast as he's cleaning it. Um, and Leather Gloves walks up behind him. And grabs this scarf. All of the top ten, they were each wear these blue uh, striped scarves to indicate their status, I suppose. Yes. And for some reason, he wears it even while he cleans his filthy dirt bike. Um, <laughs> because that's how precious the scarf is. I, well, it's, people wear scarves for status is are so weird for me. It wasn't, didn't, wasn't there a teacher in like Goodwill Hunting that wore a scarf for I, like status? I don't think I've ever seen that movie. Oh, okay, right. it, but it's it's almost like the Hogwarts houses have their different yeah. colors, right? I think that's yeah. what these kids are doing. Yeah. Um, so the glo- uh, leather gloves grabs the scarf and throws it into the rotating tire, and it yanks Etienne's face uh, into the tire, and it just grates up his face like ground meat. But we don't see it happen. I know it's it, so disappointing. The camera blurs. It, it was another thing that was cut. There was supposed to be a more graphic shot of his pulped up bloody face afterwards and it was cut this is I want a, a remake of this film i want a bloodier remake well apparently there the the full release is available somewhere on the internet um i don't oh. i don't know where well so well, when we find it we should let your listeners know you're right maybe i'll look into yeah. it and i'll put it in the social media yeah put, 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 put it on the social because i think i think the people will be clamoring because i certainly am well i would rather just watch a master cut of the gore that was cut instead of have to sit through this two hour long movie <laughs> With was, ad, with added oh, was, footage, 
It was quite. It was. It was nearly two hours, but with commercials, it was long. It it really should have. Yeah, because yeah. we used Crackle. We watched this yeah. on the free app. I'm not. <laughs> we're, we're not gonna. We're we're, we're not gonna uh, sugarcoat it. I just had. No, I just had to buy a new computer to get this podcast off the ground. I. I'm, she can't. She, she can't broke. spend extra cash. I would not be accepted into the top ten because I'm broke as hell. She's poor. Um. So Ginny and Anne skip the silent lady, and they decide to sneak into Alfred's house, breaking and entering for reasons unknown. I think they're stoned at this point. Uh, oh, sounds and so lovely. They, they climb into Alfred the Weirdo's window, and they find uh, taxidermy everywhere. It's very Norman oh, Bates, yes. right? Very. Um. So stuffed animals, but like not the cute kind, the creepy kind. <laughs> um, and special some special effects supplies, right? There's a life cast of a face. There's some plaster of Paris, and um, then they see something under like a rag with a little bit of blood on it, mm-hmm. and they uncover it, and it's Bernadette's severed head. Bum, bum. <laughs> but it's it's literally the actress play who played Bernadette. With her head through the hole of a table. <laughs> that that's day work. It's day work. That's day work. It's an extra day on her contract. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> no lines. She ain't got don't, memorized. Don't, no lines. Don't knock it. She got <laughs> she got paid for that day. Um, Alfred sneaks up behind these girls and uh, they make an, up some excuse that they were worried about him, uh, but he's acting weird and uh, he calls Bernadette's head his greatest masterpiece and that they wow. can be his next models. Um, and the girls are freaked the fuck out. But then he removes a glass eye from B's head, uh, and it reveals that it's just a prosthetic sculpture. He's weird and into special effects stuff, and he's made a sculpture of Bernadette's severed head. I hope Bernadette saved her money. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think she worked again after this. Exactly. Um, look, I don't, was he making a woman suit? What the fuck is wrong with this guy? He puts the lotion in the basket. It's very off. Uh, Ginny calls him sick and says that's not how you attract girls. Um, so next day, Ginny goes to Mrs. Patterson's office and we learn that Mrs. P knew her mother. And we get the impression that her mom had a bad reputation. So now there are She probably two- taught her. She's old enough to have maybe taught her mother. That w- um well I don't think her mother would have been able to go to the school. Of course, right? Of course, yes. but I think her mom probably had that you know that bad rep around town. Yeah. Um, when well, your mother's a whore. So- <laughs> <laughs> what did you say to me? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if the shoe fits Cinderella, wear it. I'm the whore in this family. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, no the sinners in this house. <laughs> Um, so now two kids are missing and Mrs. Patterson thinks that it's a prank. So Ginny gets detention for being rich. I don't know. Um, I've done, it's been happening to me, ta- to me a time or two. Because you're so wealthy. <laughs> you're so popular. You're such a, 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 a symbol of status. Yes. Yes. Mm. A New York socialite. Yeah. Actually, it's, you do have quite the friend circle, I have to say. You... <laughs> No, no, really, really. You're, you're a very impressive figure. I'm honored to have you oh. in my little circle. Well, but thank you. I'm, I'm honored to have you in my circle. Oh, best. sweet spirit. I love this. Um, so the top ten go to the movies. They see High Noon with Gary Cooper, which I thought was going to come into play somehow as like an Easter egg, and it just didn't. But they make a point to show it. Uh, Steve and Randy get into a shoving match. It's really lame. Um and they're fighting because two of their friends are missing. Like, oh, now you've noticed. <laughs> um, but it does give the impression that the gang is, they're unraveling, right? They're not as yes. tight. They're not as Well, happy. they're mostly dead. They're, by they're dropping like flies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they'll soon, soon will be one. So Ginny lets Alfred finally buy her that drink. But why? Like, he wants to make weird bloody prosthetic molds of severed heads. Mm-hmm. Actually, come to think of it, he sounds like my kind of guy. <laughs> Those are your, your those are your green flags. Those are my green flags. <laughs> I, I, I love to play capture the flag with men. Honestly, just I'm just grabbing those red flags as I often grab, as I, I grab green, Ooh. red, yellow, purple flag. I grab all sorts of flags. I take them all and just and, and just see what I end up with because it's a lonely town. New York City is a lonely town. <sighs> all I'll take people. all the warm bodies I can. I'll take all the cold bodies. I'll just take bodies. I'll go to, last dance with Mary Jane. Go on. So we cut to another Halloween first-person point of view ripoff of um, leather gloves. Uh, <laughs> okay. Entering while Greg 
is exercising, lifting weights in his cute little booty shorts. They're hot. Those they, are good 80 shorts. They are good. Here's the thing. He's not necessarily a hot guy. It's the 80s-ness of him that I think comes off as hot, right? Because he's got like kind Burt of... Like Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds, Burt, Burt Reynolds today would be looked over. But 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 the hairy chest and the and the, and the the shortness of it all, it's, it's just very sexy. That's, that no, that that's sexy. true. And he does carry himself in such a way. Like, yeah, you know, confidence. My panties are wet now just thinking about him. He exactly. Could get it. Um, I can hear it. <laughs> just dripping. <laughs> dripping. <laughs> Sounds like fucking Niagara Falls. So Greg sees leather gloves. We don't see the person's face. And he says, oh, hey, it's you. Um, very clue-like. Very clue. Uh, and asks leather gloves to add some more weight. He's, he's bench pressing. And so he says, throw a couple more tens on. Um, but that's too easy. So he has this person add a couple 25s. And now now Greg is starting to sweat. Sweat, man. Um, the arms can barely hold them. This was my favorite kill in the movie, but it's also the easiest to have escaped. Because- Avoided it. <laughs> because if you weren't... So, if you, but it's pride. It just shows how prideful he was. Honestly, because, yeah. Because if he weren't so prideful, he would have been able to just, just throw them. Just throw and, the weights. Uh, just drop them behind you. Because the leather gloves removes the weight rack, like pulls it away, so he can't lower the weights onto the rack. Not saying a word, leather leather face. Leather no, completely mask. silent. Leather leather wait, wait, gloves. Wait, 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 leather gloves. Thank you. I'm We're sorry. getting our sorry. accessories confused. I'm I'm so I'm so confused. <laughs> leather panties. Oh God, that's not leather it. panties. Oh, that's my movie. <laughs> what what would leather panties feel like? Okay, let's not go that down that route. Go on. You. Don't have any? Is that? I have so, something else, leather, but it's not panties. Girl. So leather gloves picks up another weight, like a plate weight, uh, and drops it on his junk, and all the guys in the movie theater groan and go, "Oh, oh bro, oh!" And when that happens, he drops the weights directly on his neck, and we get an explosion of blood. It's beautiful. I don't necessarily know if that wound would bleed the way. It looks like a water balloon yeah. pops. Yeah, it's it, it's not it's not realistic. But for a drive-in movie back in the eighties, you know, it would. Do they have drive? Yeah, they had them back because they had them when I was a kid. Um, it would be hard, it would probably have some effect. Totally, totally. Um, well, this this uh, special effects director was known for splattering blood, like filling up a bucket and just spinning in a circle and like, like kind of Pollock. That's yeah, Pollock. right, right, right. Yeah. Um, so we we cut to this was another one that was cut for blood or for an X rating. There was supposed to be even more blood than what we see, um, oh, wow. and then we cut to his girlfriend. I think it's Amelia uh, entering, and she's looking for him, but there's no one there. There's no body, um, and uh, a propped up barbell falls down, presumably the one that killed him. But it like bounces, like it's clearly not heavy <laughs> it's really bad <laughs> he got killed with like 35 pounds of like made of styrofoam <laughs> um so now we cut to a soccer game because these top 10 are so athletic They're very athletic yeah. yeah they lift weights they 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 drive motorcycles they they garden and jason can any garden can 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 you guess who wins I cannot guess. We win. Of course, the top 10 oh. wins. Um, the soccer game, because they're not losers. Rudy, um, the soccer, the star soccer player, is walking along and it looks at a little garden on campus and there's one of the blue scarves is sticking out of the ground. Yes, he, there we go. He quickly buries it. Yes. This is another red herring that goes nowhere. Three acts of red herrings. Three acts of red herrings is the, the subtitle to this movie. <laughs> uh, he and Jenny sneak into... Um, the church bell tower. It's like they sneak into a hammer film. Like suddenly the tone is very different, right? Now it's like very gothic, shadowy, and spooky. And <laughs> he starts doing impression. He does a killer impression of Peter Lowry. It's quite good. Very impressive. I, I was always like, is is, is uh, Robin Williams in this film? Oh, it's it's very Robin Williams esque. Yeah. He's very clearly like a comedic actor who was like, yeah. he pulled the director aside and was like, hey. Can I just maybe show off my range a little bit? In yeah, this scene? <laughs> yeah. There's no yeah. way this was in the script. He also does a killer Quasimodo. Yeah. Um, but all I'm thinking is, uh, are these guys trying not to get laid? Like, 
this is not how you get stealing panties, making models of their severed heads, pretending to be Peter Laurie, like. But these stereotypes explain why the men in our lives in the 80s and 90s were so strange. Well, uh, which is why you and I are so strange. I'm pretty strange. Correct. I myself am strange and unusual. Uh, <laughs> so then he pulls out a knife um, and creepily tells her, Virginia, I've got a knife. And he wants to cut the rope that's holding the bell up in the bell tower. Uh, and Rudy backs her into a corner in the shadows. And then we cut to blood dripping below, right down like levels below in the cathedral. Uh, and I couldn't figure out. It was very strange. It's a weird cut, and it, it yeah, it, yeah, it doesn't make sense until like maybe three minutes later because the you don't understand the architecture of this church. They do nothing yeah. to explain that. A priest walks up and finds it, and he had three lines in this movie. Day player, three words, three lines, and he makes the most of it. Jesus, help, murder! <laughs> like this man is clearly some kind of like regional or local theatrical star. Or he could have been a voiceover on Dark Shadows. True, very true. Um, but he makes the most of this little. We never see him again. We cut to Ginny's brain. And no surgery. one ever did. <laughs> no one ever. And no one ever did. That was the end of even, this. Even even wardrobe was like, where is that guy? <laughs> we need our priest at costume back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we cut to Ginny's brain surgery flashback again. They had a real neurosurgeon do this moment. It looks honestly pretty, pretty good. good. Like yeah, he, they have they have like the the the, the things that go around those cuts, and it's very specific. Yeah, yeah. They um, you see, kind of the skull get sawed into, and piece of the skull removed. Um, but Ginny's awake during this. Uh, it. Yeah, I don't this, know. You're, you're, you're awake during brain surgery. No, you're not. Yes, you are. No, you're not. Yes, you are. Really? Are you pulling yes. my legs? No, I'm not at all. I, I, my, my, my mother was a nurse. I, I grew up around. I grew up in a hospital. I know. I these some things I know. Wow. You, you do have to be awake during brain surgery. I. Why? Because um, of cognitive functions. Ooh. Yeah. You, you, because if you, if you're, if you're under and those cognitive functions are dull, you, they're not getting a, re, an actual reaction. Interesting. That so you, ha, you do have to be awake. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, hate yeah. That. I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> so I think I, I'm not sure if they use local anesthesia to, to to saw the brain in. I don't know how all that works. We have talked to a neurologist, but I do know, I know that you do have to be awake during brain surgery. Wow. I also know this from soap operas. <laughs> sure. I love this is like maybe the fourth soap opera reference that you have brought up. I love soap operas. I didn't know this about you. I love them. Um, They're one of my favorite uh, uh, forms of art. So art so it, it's an art form it, it or soap is an art form i mean they have longevity listen we're here to talk about a movie her dad was in the room during the procedure i guess but then jenny wakes up she was afraid in the bell tower apparently panicked blacked out and ran away to dr david um the students are are questioned at school um and dr david is at school he's on campus and he hears about murders and he hears about the bell tower and blood dripping all of this he hears it on the radio and he asks Ginny on the radio a, sorry on, i'm gonna have to pay for copyright for all of these songs that you're not, not, not 30 seconds. i'm not singing 30 seconds of them <laughs> is that the minimum i don't Correct. understand it yes. so um he asked Ginny all about it the police find um uh, uh, the scarf that had been buried in the garden uh, and the whole student body runs to see it like there's a fight in the quad <laughs> they, they, they try and like keep it a secret they're like oh okay, let's not tell anybody and then some loud mouth yeah it's always one loud mouth and yeah. so everybody runs 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 and we see Rudy drop from the second level of the library um, in a weird like hanging like a bat yeah. Uh, so first time we've seen him since this bell tower. It's just the bell tower. It's just out of nowhere, and it's not edited well. It's not handled well. It could have been cut, if I'm completely honest. But he reveals that he cut his hand on the knife while he was trying to cut the rope that holds up the bell. That's where the blood dripping down. Yes. But like that because was a lot be, of blood. He shouldn't be trusted with a knife. No. No. Um, he tells Ginny she freaked out because this is the 80s, and we tell women that they're hysterical. <laughs> Uh, wow, yeah. Well, honestly, Ginny is pretty hysterical. A, a touch. A um, touch hysterical. So outside, Dr. David finds uh, a human skull that's buried with this scarf in 
this little garden, but it turns out to belong to the science department. This is another prank. I, I love, I, I, the thing I'm obsessed about is the way that he reads the property <laughs> of the school. Yeah. And he, and, and he reads property of, and then he reads a school name as if he's never heard the school before. That's, yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm like, sir, it should be the other way around. And this but is the only super famous actor in the, in, the, in the movie, too. <laughs> what else has he done? Uh, he was the one who everyone was surprised that he did this movie. He was drunk the whole time. He was fighting the director. Um, everyone, has, everyone needs money. Yeah, yeah. Um, everyone has mortgages. So it's another prank from the top ten. But honestly, at this point, it's in poor taste. Your friends are dropping like fries, flies and you're... And fries. And fries. Have you ever eaten, <laughs> Dropping have you eaten fries, fries into the fryer? Have you ever eaten fries while you were driving? They drop. All right. Okay. <laughs> Gin, so, Ginny's birthday is coming. We're reminded what the fuck the name of this movie is an hour into it, finally. Um, and she invites Dr. David to dinner, and he agrees that they'll have dinner. Now we cut to the kids smoking weed under the swimming pool. Like, the swimming pool, there's a window into the deep end, right? They're swimming, like, they're sitting, like, adjacent to the swimming pool does that make uh -huh. sense there's like a wall between them and the pool yeah they are underground and yes. there's a window um and jenny sees someone is it her friend amelia i don't know someone sinking swimming, under the sinking, water yeah, who looks yeah. dead and jenny remembers uh someone drowning she has a memory of someone drowning is it her mother yes and jenny runs off and we do see this person's eyes open so it was another prank by the top 10 um, the senseless ignition of, of trauma is is so amazing in this film yes completely like these kids plus she's igniting, stoned igniting, like she's igniting. stoned so this is trauma induced you know while she's high so she's getting paranoid as hell um Ginny, well, yeah yeah weed was different back then it was better quality wasn't it i don't know apparently that's what yeah. everyone says i was i was too young Back then, I just listened. Yeah, okay. I just listened to Michael. <laughs> Michael Moore was on a, some podcast that I listened to, and he said that he doesn't smoke weed anymore because when he was younger, it smelled better, and that it had a more natural like. Uh, I feel like we're getting. I feel like we're getting back to that 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 era. I gotta say, and I don't smoke weed anymore. But like, mm -hmm. I was walking down the street the other day, and I smelled weed that I had never smelled before. Yeah, I've had a couple of those instances today. Yeah, I, I mean, it's legal now in New York, but I, I had never, it smelled like what it should, like is supposed to smell like. Yeah, because now horticulturists can actually do it now. Yeah, I mean, it was a we beautiful get, get, smell. Don't, don't let our horticulturists uh, get, get on weed because it's going to be boutique. Boutique as fuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um so Ginny runs off she goes back to her mother's grave um and alfred appears behind her and he's wearing leather gloves <gasps> bum, bum. and he reaches into his pocket and he approaches Ginny from behind and Ginny, just before he reaches out to her turns quickly and she stabs him with her garden shears remember Chekhov's garden shears from before yes yes um and it's revealed as he dies, that he was reaching for a white rose in his pocket, symbolizing innocence. Now, I want to talk about this death. Okay. This death is not explored. Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no uh, funeral. There's no mourning. And she doesn't get charged with anything. Like, this is where you would have, like, a fake trial. Yeah. And then the, and then, and then the murder would be on, like, a, like, a murder spree. And you're like, oh, wait, why are these murders still going on? Uh, she must not be the killer. Well, we, that's, how, that, that's how they would do it on Days of Our Lives. The, oh, Christ. The only murders that we've seen so far were someone who we didn't know who it was. And now, for the first time, we see Ginny kill someone. Yes. Um, Ginny's dad goes on a business trip, and she's upset because her birthday's Sunday, and he promises he'll be back by Sunday afternoon to help her celebrate. Yes. The top ten, or what's left of them... Uh, decide, decide. The top five. The top four, five. The, the, the top few. Um, yeah. Decide, you know, in their grief and in their mourning to go to a fucking discotheque and go disco dance. There must be one homosexual in that group. Uh, they, they're dancing like the Scooby Doo episode. You know how they awkwardly just like yes. swing their arms? Yeah. It's exactly yeah. what it looks like. Uh, and there's. These kids have been partner swapping over the last 20 minutes, and I can't oh, keep up with that. who's with who. Kids do that. Do they? I feel yeah. like I missed out on a lot of that. Uh, we, we both did, because we were both part of that group. 
uh, sure. Be, not part, not part, not of, that part of that group. Yeah. 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 But Jenny, she's dancing with Steve. She seems sexy and confident in a way that she had not been behaving before. You know, it's mm. a very different side of Ginny that we haven't seen before. Uh, Steve suggests that they go back to her place and Ginny drops these two little gems of, uh, of sexy dialogue. Well, what would my father say? <laughs> Good thing he isn't home. <laughs> um, and then she assures him, I make real good, ni- real good midnight snacks. You hungry? And then they leave together. But they get there and she actually makes him midnight snacks. Like it wasn't a euphemism for fucking. <laughs> and these are not your usual midnight snacks. No. Uh, Jason. What the fuck does she make? What the fuck does she make? Shish kebabs. <laughs> The least sexy. Listen, it's like a, it's like fondue and shish kebabs are the two least sexy foods. If stew. I'm coming and making midnight snacks, I'm literally opening a pack or or I'm popping some Trader Joe's frozen something in the in the convention oven. Because you're too busy taking off your oven. clothes. Like you've got it's, other stuff to are, do. My clothes are already off. I want something that's not going to burn my dick. Yes, thousand percent. <laughs> <laughs> it's they're just laying out in front of a fireplace, and she's feeding him shish. It's shish kebabing sexy are we missing did we miss out on something that must be a there must be some leftover crew from the 60s who thought this was hot in the 80s maybe i she's feeding them to him and then she gets a wild look in her eye and she shoves the shish kebab into his throat out the back of his head this is the famed movie poster moment right it's glorious but it's not the guy who dies that's on the movie (laughs) the movie poster calls him john it says i think it says john will never eat shish kebab again but it's steve um it's a good kill it's it's memorable it's i i think it's effective because everyone who watches this movie has seen the movie poster or the cover on the box the vhs so they know it's coming and so even though it's given away, you still have that kind of excited, like, oh, no. Oh, shit. This Something's going to happen. This is a moment. This is the moment. Um, next morning, Ginny has completely forgotten what happened. Isn't that convenient? It's always convenient. And stops by. She's wearing a blue top. Um, and she waits downstairs while Ginny goes and showers. And in the shower, she remembers the night her mom died. Now, for me, this is when the movie gets good. And it's like an hour and a half into the movie. <laughs> she... Um, she drank and she drove off some drawbridge, the same drawbridge from before. So that's mm-hmm. how her mom died. We see the car fall four times into the water. Um, it's like re- uh, uh, replay, like instant replay, instant replay. Um, so she and her mother are, are sinking in the water and her mother encourages her to save herself. She's pinned under the wheel. Um, she, Ginny is uh, very upset, clearly. These are her final moments with her mother. Uh, she opens the window, rolls it down. Remember, roll down windows in cars? You're supposed, you're supposed to, if you don't know, if you fall into the river in a car, roll down the window. Does it still work if it's an electric window and you're underwater? I don't know. I don't know either. But 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 but, but if you're going to die, you might as well try. You might as well go, go out fighting, go out swimming. <laughs> um, <laughs> so she rolls down the window, she climbs out, and then a male stunt double swims up to the surface. <laughs> In a bad wig. Very clearly a barrel-shaped body, no waistline, (laughs) just a man in the same white dress in a bad wig swimming up to the surface, and she uh, smashes her head on a passing barge or ship or ferry or something. And then when she comes to, um, meaning like back to present, the flashback is over, Anne is dead in the bathtub with her throat slit, and there's water just pouring everywhere out of this bathtub. Love it. She screams for Dr. David, who conveniently arrives at her house. And she tells him, oh, my God, I killed Anne. Come, come, come. And she shows him, but the body is gone. And there's no water all over the place. Um, bum, bum. So she is clearly having a, you know, a hysterical a episode. Moment. She's yeah, yeah, she's really losing her grip. Um, doc, the Dave says they have to find the link between her trauma and her friends. And Ginny realizes she was triggered when her friends made her race over that same bridge where her mom died. Um, and they realize this right at midnight when it's officially Jenny's birthday. Meanwhile, Anne, who had allegedly come over, maybe has disappeared, right? Yeah. Um, so did she really come over? Did she not? We're unsure at this point. Because memory um, is, is, a uh, is gone. So it's, it's officially midnight. 
and Dr. David wishes Ginny a happy birthday and he strokes her cheek and then she kisses his hand, which is where I get this weird daddy issue thing from. Yeah. Um, it's just like hinted at and never explored, which is for the best, I think. I thank God. Um, next thank morning, God. cops are swarming the area, uh, area and they knock on the door and they ask about Anne because her car was found, but she's missing. So did she really show up? Did Ginny kill her and mop up all of that water really fast? <laughs> uh, so another flashback. And this so is Agatha Christie. This is where it all starts to make sense before it stops making sense again. Very Agatha Christie. Um, yeah. Ginny remembers her birthday four years before. So it's the same actress playing Ginny at 14 now. And it's mm-hmm. not quite that believable. But, <laughs> um, but, we, but, we, but we suspend relief because we're in a movie that's done a lot weirder things. Yes, too. that's that's true. So she has... They shut the um, shish kebab down someone's throat. <laughs> and they went disco dancing. <laughs> uh, her mom is drunk. Well, disco's still alive in the, in the early 80s. 81, 82, yeah. When yeah. did disco die? I'm not against disco. If I'm cleaning house, I'm listening to disco. It's motivating. It's cheerful. I fully believe I would have had a great time at Studio 54 before I overdosed on Quaaludes. <laughs> Of course, up on the balcony, a thousand of course. percent. You weren't, you, you'd be dancing with Liza, just pass out, and she would move on. Liza would have been dancing with me. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, and you would pass out, and she would have moved on after you she passed would have out. Moved on. You're right. You're totally right. Yeah. Uh, so she's like, "Ooh, a horse." <laughs> Are you talking about me or the horse in Studio Fifty Four? <laughs> the world will never know. Four years earlier, <laughs> this birthday party. It's really pretty. There's little pink decorations and streamers. It's kind of that like picturesque, cute frilly birthday party there's a pretty yes. cake on the table and her mom is real drunk right mm-hmm. um and uh her mom has invited the richest kids who would become the top 10 oh, right so this. six of the richest most successful children um but no one's arrived her dad calls he says that he can't make it and uh jenny's mom freaks the fuck out now we love jenny's mom estelle right her performance, well, yeah, her performance is is so camp. It's like she's in a whole other it's, movie. Oh yeah, it is it is camp, tastic. Um, and uh, so this explains when when he tells her that he can't make it. This is why probably why Jenny was so upset when he said that he had to go on a business trip in present day, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so the kids don't come to her birthday because it turns out Anne is throwing a party and they're all there instead. And Ginny's mom says, well, I'll call them and make them come here instead. And and Ginny says, they don't even know who I am, mom. Like, she's humiliated. Drunk mom makes Anne get into the car, and they drive up to the front gates of Anne's mansion. In the rain. In the rain. Pouring Pouring down rain. The gatekeeper, which is just maybe some symbolism, the gatekeeper of the mansion. It's very once on this island. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of the the haves and have-nots. Yeah. The separate classes. Yeah. Um, tells Ginny's mom, the gatekeeper tells Ginny's mom that because of who she is, she will never be accepted, even though she's rich now. Like, you can send your little girl to that school, but you'll never be a part of them. Um, and this is coming from the help. Like, if you're hearing that from the, <laughs> the hired new staff, money, New money versus old money is a really, very real thing, and, and the help understands that. It's true. That's true. Better than anybody in this movie. Better because they see it. They see it. Honestly, we could win the lottery tomorrow, and we, we, could, be, we could have more money than people with old money. And, we'll, and never still not be a rock, a, we'll never be a Rockefeller. Yeah. Yeah. You will never be a Rockefeller. You will never be. I was thinking about that with the with the queen dying. Like, what an interesting thing. Like, no matter what, we all idolize these people, but like, we'll never, ever, ever be them. Never. I ever. Stopped, I've really stopped. I, I mean, I used to really, like, I watched the, you know, the weddings and the funerals. And I, I didn't tune into anything with Queen Elizabeth's passing. And, it was boring as fuck. Well, I ju- you, you did the right thing. I don't feel any connection to it, you know, and I just feel like. The world has changed so much since the yeah. last royal event, um, and it is you know it's 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 sad in its way you know but their their complete their existence, the mere fact that that the the royal family exists is just an out of date. I don't know expression of we are you are less than us because we tell you so. Because we told you so. Who the fuck are they? Bloodlines. Who the fuck are they? Yeah. They just were conquerors. Yeah. I don't know enough about it to get that into it. And we're going to get back to the point of the movie. I do wish that this movie had driven this point 
a little further. The separation yeah, between it's, it's, it's important. It's important. It's, it really it really is the film. Yeah, yeah, but it, there's too many red herrings. Red and too herrings. Many, yeah, like uh, plot lines that go nowhere. But um, so um, so unfortunately, Ginny, uh, rem- she comes to and she runs away from the doctor uh and she grabs a fire poker and she bludgeons him to death and <laughs> she kills the most famous actor in the movie um this out of all the kills is the kill with way too much blood you know yeah it's ridiculous it's but we're grateful for it at this point at this point something is happening something has to yeah 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 because yeah. um, we're reaching ahead everything's reaching ahead we're getting there yeah. Daddy gets home with birthday presents in his hands and he discovers the blood and he thinks it's Ginny's. And he's running and running. He's screaming, Ginny, oh my God, my little girl. And it's uh, it started raining again, just like that fateful night. Huh. And uh, he runs into the cemetery in the rain and he finds uh, Amelia, the only friend who hasn't been killed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, he thinks it's Ginny at first, but she she turns around and she's holding birthday presents and she has a shocked expression on her face. Now, I think she was supposed to get killed with an axe originally mm-hmm. and it was cut for the X rating. I think they added this awkward moment of her standing in the cemetery just to show her like not dead. You know what I mean? Everyone else has been killed. Yeah. Um, it's just Wait, weird. What do you mean? Wait, what do you mean? Amelia's standing there with a shocked expression holding birthday presents, right? Yeah, yeah. It's very out of place, and it doesn't really explain what she's doing there. I think that if because they cut the her getting killed with an axe, they wanted to insert that she is actually okay, or that she... Just so that no one leaves the movie thinking what happened to Amelia. Um, so then Daddy runs away from Amelia. He finds Estelle, or the mother's grave, and it's been dug up, and Dr. David's corpse has been thrown into the casket. Uh, then he sees a light on in the guest house. It's still pouring down rain. Um, and he goes inside to the guest house and it turns out that that was the location of Ginny's birthday four years ago. And it's still set with that same cake, birthday cake, the pretty decorations, but of course it's all rotten now. It's all, um, I love actually the set design, the production design of yeah, me this too. Yeah, look. me too. I think it's so effective. Very macabre. 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 It's spooky. It's well lit. You Mm know, um, if only the whole movie had been this effective. It would have been too much. I think think it's nice to have the shift. He, that's true. It comes out of nowhere and you're kind of taken into something unexpected. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, He turns a chair around. He spins it around. And uh, Mrs. Bates is sitting in the chair from Psycho. <laughs> no, it's um, it's Estelle. Ba-bum. It's Ginny's mom. And it, it, yeah. it's clearly an ode to Psycho, right? It's yes. clearly an homage. Yeah. Um, very good looking corpse, I got to say. It's drippy. It's gooey. There's a maggot mm. in the eyeball. Mm. Um, and then Ginny, Ginny enters with a cake with lit candles singing Happy Birthday to Me. Title drop. And uh, the candles... <laughs> <laughs> As she approaches the table, the candles illuminate the mangled bodies of her dead friends all surrounding oh, the table. And the, I love it. the makeup effects are really actually pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like the the last in the book the, the of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory where you know you see the, the the mangled bodies of the children who went through the chocolate factory afterwards. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just they're not singing about it in this one. Yeah, I know. I wish they would. Um, Next it, time. It looks really good. Her dad yeah. is freaked the fuck out. She, <laughs> Jenny sets down the cake. She puts a party hat on her dad. And she goes, that's better. It's a cute little <laughs> delivery. Uh, Jenny's unhinged as hell. She makes a birthday wish and blows out the candles. She asks her dad, Daddy, do you want a big piece or a little piece? And her dad just said, Jenny, baby, what have I done to you? The doctors were so sure. So sure. So we're going back to this brain surgery thing. If mm-hmm. I'm honest... The whole brain surgery thing should have been cut. Like, it's not necessary. Well, it's more necessary for that scene than all the other red herring. <sighs> yes, sure. If I'll, if I'll, I'll keep the, the, the brain surgery and, 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 and put away the, 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 the flowery panties. I, I think, yeah, for sure. I, I think the writers were trying to get us interested in the other top ten, and they just they were unli- it made them unlikable. Correct. So when they Correct. died, you didn't, you didn't care. care. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ginny picks up the cake knife, and 
she slashes her daddy's throat and he falls to the table. His hand clutches the birthday cake. It's a pretty cool shot. Yeah. Uh, and then suddenly what we presumed to be Anne's body in that blue top from earlier, right? Sitting face down on the table begins to stir and it's Ginny again, a second Ginny in Anne's blue shirt. Uh, she, <laughs> she's been drugged. She looks around the table at all of her dead friends, and we hear these voiceovers of quotes that they've said from the, the movie from before. And again, a pretty effective, cool moment. Um, it, it's it's kind of sad, even though we didn't really like any of these people, you know. No, what not if, one of them. Not one of them. It's, you know, an upsetting thing one. to wake up to. Not even the, well, yeah. Uh, so Ginny's doppelganger says, because I ruined your last birthday party, dear sister, I made certain everyone's here just as you wanted. And she tries to kill Ginny. So what's happened is um, the real Ginny was drugged and her she was put down on the table. And this mm-hmm. fake Ginny, this new Ginny, is the one who killed daddy. Yes. Ginny grabs Ginny 2's hair and you think she's going to rip a plug of hair out. And the, the hand slides. The hand slides, and Jason, what the hell happens here? We have a Scooby Doo moment, <laughs> where it's it's oh my god, it's it's so and so from the from the local farm. It's Mr. Smithers. Mr. Smithers, the local farm. <laughs> But it's not uh, Mr. Smithers, <laughs> is it? It's Anne. This yeah. this fake face comes off, and it. <laughs> This is such an, a batshit crazy moment. It's such a crazy trope that they used to, to pull this off. Oh my god. <laughs> Very completely Scooby Doo. This ending comes out of fucking nowhere. So, as it turns out, this whole twist happened. Orig- um, they, they, wrote, they rewrote this ending halfway through, and Anne oh, found out Christ. that she was going to be the killer halfway through the movie. So, Al- uh, Alfred must have helped her with these prosthetic face, I would think, mm-hmm. right? Um,. And she has set the whole thing up. It turns out that Estelle, Jenny's mom, was her father's mistress, and they are half sisters. And she calls her mom a fucking whore. It's the one f bomb that they drop in this movie. Um, it was, was appropriate. A, it was appropriate. It's a good yeah. moment. It's yeah. a good moment. She says, yeah. "I dressed like you. I walked like you. I even talked like you." Which I gotta say, like, S- sounds like torture. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny's such a milk toast character. You're absolutely right about that. She's the only one that gets any character development, and she's so fucking boring. Uh, so she staged the whole thing as a murder suicide, set up as revenge for Estelle wrecking her home. Um, and and then she tells her, "Now we'll see, or now we'll all know just how crazy little Jenny really was." <sighs> and she tries to stab Jenny, the real Jenny. But she she grabs the knife and in the lamest kill of the movie turns it around and shoves it into Anne's stomach. Mm-hmm. This whole reveal happens really quickly, it's and fair, I, it's like five minutes. It's it's less than I mean it's I kind of I just feel like we have built up we spent so much wasted time that the build up to all of this could have been a little more solid. Or yeah. do you think it's effective because it's so shockingly quick, and you're just left like what the hell just happened? I think they, I think they realize that the kids will be making out by this point. <laughs> just so let's they just, wrap it up. They're like, just wrap it up. <laughs> uh, let, the, let the kids have their kids, and we'll we'll move on. So it is. Well, the the lame the kill is lame. The yeah. shot is pretty good because you see the the you see Anne get stabbed, and yes. then the door opens, and the police officer who was asking before about the the car Anne's car um, walks in the door and police are it, always late. Always late. Always late. Uh, he looks at Jenny and he says, what have you done? And then we hear Jenny's voice singing happy birthday to me. And we fade to black. She end went to of, jail. End of film. Do you think so? What do you think happened to Jenny? She probably went to jail. But I'm sure, I mean, she, she probably was arrested. And then maybe there was an investigation. But this town doesn't seem like they have a very good forensics department. So she probably went to jail. <laughs> There's no forensics department. No, I don't know. No. She's rich. Part of the, this movie the, the, is about think, rich kids getting away with stuff. Yeah. Maybe. Do you think maybe that her, her kind of wealthy privilege might get her out of it? Maybe. Maybe. Do you maybe. think we're reading too much into a mediocre I think movie? Too much into it. <laughs> I think I actually think that the the the, uh, the police chief is a is a rabid raccoon. I don't think that in a trench uh, coat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like five. It's like five raccoons in a trench coat. So I don't think anything will ever come of it. And as soon as it fades to black, they all jump on the table and start eating the birthday cake. <laughs> <laughs> 
Exactly. Um, then that, my friends, is happy birthday to me. There's an end credit song. Not a lot of horror movies get an end credit song. Pet Cemetery had one. I think Fright Night had one. But so this one, it's sung by a recording artist named Sarita. She was the ex-wife of Stevie Wonder, actually. And it's a really wow. spooky tune. It's so crazy that Stevie Wonder has an ex. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know much of anything about his life. I'm surprised there hasn't been a Stevie Wonder movie. There will be once he dies. Yeah, they all, they tend to wait, don't they? Yeah, they wait till they die. Um, this movie brought in ten point six million, but it was only made for three point five. So that's that's a big budget they, for they that made, time. They, they made they made some money. They made their money again. Continue to make it's on Crackle. You, you had to pay for it on every other um, streaming service, so they're making some money. That's true. Even someone's making money. Someone's getting that money. I don't know who is. Um, the critics hated it, which is not surprising. <laughs> Um, but I, I do think it's interesting because the movie plays with that supposed final girl also being the killer thing, but then yeah. it's only, it's just, it, it has like a rushed, confusing ending in the last yeah. 20, you know, the last twist. I think it's about 20 minutes too long. The original ending. Maybe half an hour too long. The original ending before they rewrote it was that, um, Ginny was the killer and that she, uh, her mother's spirit would possess her to kill off these friends who had who had done her wrong. Um, mm, that's horrible. It's lame, right? This even batshit Friday, even, ending. Even Friday the 13th didn't do that. No, Friday no, you're right. Um even though they could have. This ending they could have. This ending I think is even though it's silly, it's better. It leaves you just Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a good moment you're like, oh, "Okay, well something at least something was going on." But, and you move on. So it was part again I, I mentioned part of the exploitation uh series of horror movies. Uh, prom night, terror train, I love my bloody night. Valentine. But so this, well, it was kind of a part of. Aside from being Canadian exploitation, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those like special occasion or or uh, holiday horror movies yes. with the theme like prom night, graduation day, home sweet home. I think was about Thanksgiving, uh, New Year's what? Evil. I don't know if I've seen that one. It's not. It's fine. I don't know. I thought about okay. doing it in November this year, but I'll wait okay. until next year. Okay. All right. Um, Slumber Party Massacre, Friday the 13th, right? Um, yeah. They ran out of holidays, and now <laughs> we have no original stories left to tell. Well, I would like to see more. I mean, there are more holidays. I mean, can we have a Columbus Day? I mean, I guess Columbus Day. We just show the story of, of Christopher Columbus. It just it's is a horror, a horror movie. Yeah. It is a horror film. Uh, do we have New Year's? We have New Year's. We must have New Year's. New Year's Evil. Oh, I've not, I've, I've not seen it. It's cute. Uh, it's, it's... Is, 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 is there, um, how about National Donut Day? Why well, don't we, you write we, that we, one? We, 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 yeah, we got to start <laughs> on like, the National Days. Why don't you write that one? Okay, all right, I'll get right on it. Um, promotional advertising for this movie was kind of cool. They kind of took a note from William Castle um, with gimmicks, right? So some screenings would pass out uh, party favors before you mm -hmm. walked in. Or they would have that birthday scene set up in the th the lobby of the theater um, without the corpses. Um, they would pass out piece little pieces of birthday cake of Ginny's birthday cake when you were standing in line because you used to have to stand in line for movies. Back in the day. Uh, back in the I'll day, you it. waited for the last movie to get out. Yeah, and then I stood you, in line for Jurassic Park. Uh, we, I remember. Yeah, I. I always see pictures of like when The Exorcist came out and people just standing in line around the block to see this yeah. movie. Like I actually long for that. We're never going to have we'll a never, horror we'll movie that comes out that shakes the world quite like that or like Psycho or, you know. We've seen and plus everything's going to be streamed nowadays. Yeah. Because the minute something comes out that I don't really have time for, I'm like, you know what? I'll see it eventually. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get so, to it. All right. I would love to put this movie to rest. Because <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, let me ask you, the, the rating system on on Rick or Treat Horror Cast, okay. uh, we, we classify a movie as either a trick, which means um, it was okay. It was fine. Mm -hmm. A treat, uh, which means you loved it. Or mm -hmm. a smell my feet, which means it sucked. That movie can smell my feet. Oh. What would you call this movie? This is a trick. Yeah. Same. Yeah, it's a trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same. I'm not going to like rush to see it, but if it's on TV, if I'm flipping channels, I might. Oh, I'd, cer I'd certainly put this on before I go to bed. I love I love watching campy horror films to go to bed, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a good one. And it's boring. So there's enough. <laughs> I don't put well, you to sleep. It's, bo it's boring, and there's enough, like, is there, are there some screams? Screams no good are what ones. Lulling, the, 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 no, yeah, maybe I wouldn't, because the screams are what lull me, lull me to sleep. You're so sick. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jason, 
I'm really grateful that you took the time to be a part of my very first episode of the podcast. I'm really, oh, I'm really so glad you invited me. Really this is, honored. It's been really wonderful. It's been, it was great to watch because I thought you meant I, I, when you first told me about this film, I thought you meant uh, uh, what was the other one? Uh, no, Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to me. Yeah, Happy we talked about me. it earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought it was that, so I was like, "Oh, I already know this." It, it, it ends up really cool, especially the sequel. Uh, but I was, I was grateful to know it was something else and yeah. something just as campy. Something, yeah, it's actually, actually well, something yeah. a little new for sure. Yeah, new yeah. and campy. I love a new horror film. Um, well, it was a great birthday gift to me to have Aww. you on this show. Um, Happy forty first. How fucking dare you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, er, do you uh, do you want to plug anything? Do you, do you have any projects coming up? What about your social media? You can always find me at uh, Jason L. Kerr, J-A-Y-S-O-N-L-K-E-R-R on Instagram. You can always swing by and tell me I'm pretty. You find me on any of the uh, uh, dating apps, find me and tell me I'm pretty, and I will always answer back. Because yes, she, I am I am a slut for attention. Because she's thirsty. Because <laughs> she, <laughs> she's thirsty. Uh, she's and, always thirsty. Uh, you can find me, myself, Ricky, at, at Rick, the letter R, treat on Instagram. Rick, the letter R, tweet on Twitter. And you can follow the podcast at Rick at Rick or treat pod. Uh, on Instagram. I'm going to set up a Twitter that will probably have the same handle probably by the time this episode drops. Love it. Um, and I also write reviews for a website, spoilerfreereviews.com. I review movies and uh, television shows and it's uh, it's it's a lot of fun for me and um, it, it's if, it's just if you want to continue my opinion, if you want to continue to hear my opinions about things, check that out. And it's uh, unlike this episode, no spoilers. You can freely and safely read things on that website and this, yeah, this, this podcast is lousy with spoilers. I love <laughs> lousy. It. Uh, <laughs> next week, we're going to have our first, my first uh, Disney villain profile. It's a series we're calling Evil Queens because we're oh, queer. I love that. Uh, yes. And in, in honor of uh, Hocus Pocus dropping, we're going to profile um, the Sanderson sisters. Uh, and talk about their history and just kind of our connection to them. And I'm going to have a, a, another very special guest on. But Jason, I do hope you'll come back uh, and be a guest again on this podcast. I would love to. Thank you again for having me. This has been really wonderful. Absolutely. It's an honor. And um, that's what I've got. All right. Later, spookies. Bye. Bye.